Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Planet Destiny. I am the Black Link, joined once again by Story Machine. We're going to be talking very heavily about the way weapons and armor look. And, uh, Guns, dude, ammo, and clothing is basically, basically where we're at today. Yeah, we had systematically all of the new tweaked, remodeled raid armor. First up was, of course, the Vault of Glass gear. We got to see some Vex-themed armor with kind of this blue ethereal glow. And uh, it also confirmed one other thing that, you know, people who have been studying these images noticed a long time ago. Some of the armor sets, uh, the legs on them, they're yes. Vex legs, aren't they? Vex feet. Uh, that I'm essentially <laughs> yeah. nerdishly aroused by this. I think those are going to be... <laughs> The boots that I am looking for on pretty much all of my guardians, I think. I want vexed legs, vexed feet. They also slipped in while we were having a look at this um, vex themed Vault of Glass stuff. The, the raid ornament tokens that you get, these, uh, um, well, the ornaments for all the armor are in fact universal, aren't they? So, like, yes. if you collect. Uh, ornaments um, in the uh, weekly playlist, the, the the raid kind of focus challenge, then that will apply to all of the armor, the Crota's End, the Wrath of the Machine, uh, King's Fall, etc., etc. So that was it was kind of handy that they slipped that in there right there at the beginning. Which is absolutely fantastic. Um, for those who don't know, you'll be able to get the new raid ornaments by completing the raid challenges when they are the weekly featured raid. So in that rotating weekly playlist of raids. And uh, so basically what they confirmed is that the, the ornaments that you get, the ornament item that you get from those raids is basically universal. You'll be, if, if say you complete yeah. the challenge on the Vaults of Glass week, the ornament that you get, you'll be able to use on the Wrath of the Machine armor, the King's Fall armor, the Crota's End armor, which is a very good way of unifying that sort of system. And I'm glad they did that. Makes a lot of sense, um, really, doesn't it? Otherwise, yeah. we'd have a lot of a lot of kind of extraneous stuff to collect and a bit more frustration on the whole cosmetics customization kind of stuff. So that was a, that was a wise maneuver, I feel. Yes. Yeah. We had the all time speculative hubbub that's been kind of brewing around for quite some time now about the elemental primaries. Yeah. There was a lot of speculation flying flying around, and we now have a definitive definitive answer, which is they're coming back. Yes, <laughs> but in a very limited sort of way. This yes. is something that we've been kind of tossing back and forth for a long time. You know, how exactly is Bungie going to bring back elemental primaries? What are they going to do? And well, they told us today. So when it comes to these raids, they're going to have two sets of weapons. You're going to be able to run the raid normally at 390 whenever you unlock it, and you'll be able to get the normal raid weapons from that raid. But from the weekly featured raid, whenever you do a raid that is the weekly featured playlist raid, you'll be able to get adept versions of the primaries from that raid. And the adept versions of those primaries will have elemental burns. That's kind yes. of a, a large change, but it's not the only large change because there's a little bit, a little tiny little asterisk on that in that these elemental primaries will be exotics. Yes. So you're, you're going to have a chance at getting a legendary Fatebringer. Let's take Fatebringer as a perfect example. But that legendary mm -hmm. will have, um, apparently will have identical perks. The only thing that yes. it will be missing from the Adept Exotic is the Elemental Burn. So there is no need to equip the um, Exotic Adept version of the Fatebringer to play in PvP, for example. That would be a waste of yeah. the Exotic slot, so there would be a choice. It's kind of satisfying both sides of the fence man so we've got two lots of cows chewing the grass should be quite happy in theory shouldn't they <laughs> yeah. it's it, in theory you know it's certainly an attempt to placate both of those audiences i'm still not quite sure how i feel about um having adept versions of weapons locked behind the exotic gate it's certainly going to be great to be able to have that full fate bringer back and uh with all of its art glory uh, as well as you know the other perks that normally roll onto it but yeah. the question that i brought up with my with a buddy of mine while we were watching the stream live is that um this is going to be the case for all raid weapons all yeah. raid primaries are going yeah. to have an adept form that is going to be exotic with an element and some of those raid primaries just kind of aren't worth it like Word of Crota, like 
Zowley's Bane. Who's going to waste an exotic slot on an adept Zowley's Bane? I mean, really? Well, it depends what elemental damage it will have. I mean, that would mm-hmm. obviously... And we also don't know that, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we don't know. And it's only going to pertain to PvE. So if you've got a Nightfall and there's an Arc Burn and you've got a Zowley's Bane with Arc Burn on it or a Fate Bringer, then your exotic slot is most likely going to be filled with, you know, an elemental primary. That's right. And, you know, it all comes down to choice, which is which is yeah. the good takeaway from me for someone who's like who's who's a year one player. And it's like, mm, I don't know about having adept exotic versions of these guns. What I can really get on board with is the fact that you have a choice now. You can yeah. have the non elemental version if you're a PVP sort of guy. And if you know, you if, if the odd arc burn small arms week comes up in heroics, you can whip out that exotic fate bringer and treat it just like it was year one with you yeah. blasting everything into oblivion. And yeah. um, having that ultimate choice there I think is a is a very good idea we did get to see vision of confluence and it looked very yep. good with its nice new color scheme yeah and then we got to see the vex mythoclast we did and it's lovely silver it's almost like some kind of midnight blue I don't know I mean it, mm-hmm. it could be just the lighting but silver and midnight blue I was honestly expecting it to be black but uh, I was wrong. too that, although that was only one ornament it's probably going to have two. Oh yeah that would be nice that would be nice indeed man I want to see what that's all about. But yeah, all the other weapons. Yeah, we saw the Mythic Class. We saw all the original um, Vaults of Glass weapons, the um, He's and Rocket Launcher, the uh, uh, Corrective Measure. We got the uh, Found Verdict, as well as the uh, Praetorian's Foil and the Sniper Rifle, which is Praetith's Revenge. Praetith's Revenge. Yeah. My favorite pseudo scout rifle from year one. Yeah, man. I mean, everything's making a comeback. They're not all going Mm -hmm. to be... um, I think it's just the primaries that are going to have these adept exotic versions. Correct, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, all in all, what the armor looked pretty cool. I'm just honestly hoping that we can get access to having it look like it did in year one, because that stuff did look fantastic. I love what they've done with this new wave. You know, this blue ethereal kind of very vex you know smooth shiny kind of stuff that did look fantastic great art and design do we do we expect anything less with the uh, with the bungee guys at really? this point not at all yeah but maybe and we'll um if you think should we move to the crota's end armor because this has been quite uh, anticipated by the community the crota's end gear is basically a remapping of the original crota's end armor with these awesome luminescent green spikes and horns that come out of every facet of the armor and man does it look good in uh yeah. in, in as good in practice as it did in that trailer and uh, the or- dude, this this might be the best looking set of armor in the game now. I, I, at this point, I, I saw that, and I'm like, the, yeah, this is definitely a huge improvement to the original Crotus End armor, which I didn't particularly like very much. But my personally, yeah. you know, like I didn't like it. But this stuff looks fantastic. And when they were shooting at each other during the live stream, and we actually saw the effect um, diminish and then recharge again on recovery. That really did highlight this lovely kind of green. It was like oh, a green absolutely. blue kind of very gradated, like a gradient um, color there. I absolutely loved it. But at this p- point in time, I won't tell you what my favorite armor is, but this is the definitely coming in at a close second. Yeah, you know, yeah. with all these new sets coming forward, I mean, there's a lot to love. And for those who didn't get a chance to see it, I'm sure there will be a, a clip of it up on the screen right now. Yeah. But if you saw what the the, the Crota Zend armor looked like, you know, it's basically the, the normal Crota Zend set with these awesome luminescent green horns and spikes everywhere. When you take damage, those things, they disappear and then they slowly build back up. Yeah. Which is like the coolest looking thing in the world. And apparently that's going to be an effect on, I think, um, all of the, all of all the, of the raid gear, yeah. isn't it? So your oh, teammates, that's be so cool. your teammates can tell that you've been damaged. It's like a, it's a visual confirmation that you've been damaged and you're recovering yeah. as well, which is and pretty handy, I think. Some of it's really bright as well. I think, uh, the, especially the, the, the Crota's End stuff, it is quite bright. I and mean, in dark corridors, it's going to light you up like a Christmas tree. So it is. I, I almost want to be damaged wearing that just so I can, you know, stay off people's visual radar, you know? 
But uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see how bright it is in PvP because that stuff looks like carnival level bright, you know. Yeah, it's going to make for some easy headshots, but uh, you'll look good going down. Yeah. We can at the (laughs) very least say that. Stylish on the floor, Dad. Um, They confirmed that the Black Hammer, the old favorite, um, is not returning as well because we already had the Black Spindle leak. This this was a weapon that broke the the unique cycle of all these old raid weapons being brought back into current circulation the black hammer is not going to return because they already brought that back with the black spindle so i don't this know was what, a bit of a point of contention and yeah. um i was streaming before the bungee went live and this was the number one question everyone kept asking me what's going to happen with black hammer what's going to happen yeah. with black spindle and I, I i basically told them on stream that um i'd love to see them work together that would be my ideal option you know maybe change up some of the perks on black hammer give it like triple tap and casket mag so that its big thing would be it can have seven rounds in the mag and yeah. then just leave black spindle the way it is or give black spindle black hammer's old ability to have infinite ammo yeah. But I said the most realistic option here, the bungo option is going to be that they're basically probably going to remove <laughs> Black Hammer in its entirety. Yeah. And unfortunately, that is exactly what they wound up doing. And um, certainly it, it makes sense to mention that all of the other Crotazin weapons are returning. The this, the Fang of Ear Ute, the Song yeah. of Ear Ute, the Word of Crota, the Abyss Defiant, the Oversoul Edict we actually got to see in the teaser trailer, the Word of Crota, all of that stuff is coming back. It's just the Black Hammer that is getting, uh, getting the axe. Axed. And yeah. we are sorry to see it go. Yeah. But in addition to all of those other weapons coming back, you know what else is making its way to year three? It's got to be the Necrochasm. You know? It is the Necrochasm. We actually got to see some of the Necrochasm, and they spoke a little bit about uh, some of the changes, or rather really one big change that they made to it. So, of course, right now the Necrochasm has a special ability that when you get precision kills, it causes the enemy that you kill to explode in sort of a cursed thrall like explosion. When yeah. the Age of Triumph comes out, the Year 3 Necrochasm is going to be able to trigger that explosion on every single kill now. That you don't have to get, get precision kills anymore. Yeah, that is going to turn that gun into a highly coveted fun mobile, basically. Oh, yeah. And if the... Are we going to get to the, the buffs and nerfs of the weapons? But they did slip in at this point that auto rifles are getting another tweak. So this it just highlights the fact that the Necrochasm is going to be quite a sought-after gun. People are going to be going after this heavy fast and heavy just to see if it actually is going to get its time in the limelight because it never did vex got its time out there it was very very it was overpowered in the beginning and even after the nerf it was used necrochasm just disappeared it was incredibly hard to get and it vanished and it you still know. is incredibly hard to get. There's still people out there who have never gotten, say, a Crux of Crota or a Husk yeah. of the Pit to drop. And yeah. they didn't quite mention how you'd be able to get the Necrochasm in Year 3. I really hope that there's going to be a quest line to, uh, to to pick that thing up rather than it just being some sort of drop. But, um, yeah, the Necrochasm, it, it, it was like the top of the Crucible for about two weeks in between House of Wolves and the drop of the Taken King. Literally at the very end of that time frame, it was great for two weeks and then it was useless again. And yeah. um, it's going to be good to see it come back and uh, have that cursed thrall explosion thing happen on every single kill now. That gets a uh, thumbs up from me. Oh, each each one of my characters is going to have one. One and one for Sunday <laughs> best. You know, I'm, I'm actually Christmas. really looking forward to that. You know, I like making things explode. I like explosions. What can it's I say? Fun. I think that was pretty much everything. We covered Necrogasm. Yeah. We covered that Black Hammer's not coming back. Uh, you're going to have to use that Black Spindle with the new crispy ornament, by the way. So let's head yeah. on into King's Fall, man. Go right ahead. Oh, my God. This is my number one <laughs> favorite looking armor. I didn't I didn't really... King's Fall armor never really did it for me. But in particular, that Warlock helmet is really rubbing my rhubarb chronically right yeah. now the the hunter helmet as well I, i'm gonna probably wear a mix and match of like i don't know the 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 crota's end stuff and the helmets from king's fall but they did a fantastic job of this uh with this blue ethereal lava light stuff and the stone and the granite i just think it looks superb like you said that blue sort of ethereal light yeah. on the helmets and kind of coursing throughout the armor that is what's going to be changing when like just like the crotus gear when you take damage that'll darken and then slowly light back up as your health returns to max and it looks really really good yep 
want it. I want it now. Tuesday card. Well, actually, no, we have to wait, don't we? We have to wait a while. Yeah, we have to wait. Yeah, that's um, going to be... I think this. King's Fall is going to be the third week after Rise or Age of Triumph comes out. It's Because the first week's going to be Crota's Raid. Then it's going to be Vault of Glass. Then I think it's going to be King's Fall. Dun, dun, so we, dun, have, dun. we have a little while to wait before we can finally get our hands on at least some of this gear. Very similarly to just about uh, the other raids, all of the King's Fall weapons are coming back. You're going to be able to get your Anguish of Drystin. You're going to be able to get your uh, Smite of Moraine in both a normal and in Adept version. The Adept version, of course, coming from that raid whenever it's the weekly featured raid. And those Adept versions, for the first time, are going to have elements. We never got elements on King's Fall weapons. Yeah. And that was confirmed on stream that these guns are going to have elemental burns on them. What those burns are going to be, we're not quite sure. The teaser trailer showed an anguish of Dryston shooting what looked like uh, arc bullets. So arc I'd bullets, be willing yeah. to bet that, that that's probably at least that's going to be arc. Yeah, we'll see. But we do know that, you know, all of these guns are going to have an adept form that looks a little bit different and has an element and is going to be exotic. Although I don't know who's going to use an exotic Zally's Bane. Yes. It's, I'd uh, like to have an extended conversation with the person who's excited <laughs> about why? an exotic Zally's Bane. Like, why you do ex- this? Explain to me. <laughs> why, why you do this? Why, why you do, do this? you do this? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, I think that's about it for the King, King's Fall. It, look, it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, that's definitely my favorite stuff. I'm going to be hunting mm-hmm. for that. Um, so the looks next, good. Um, yeah, next up. Touch got, of Malice. We got to see Touch of Malice. Oh, yeah. That was fantastic as well. We've got some ornaments coming in for that. It was like a almost like a was it mauve or more burgundy the kind of yeah sash. it was it was a meteor fleshier color <laughs> yeah for the the touch of malice which i i <laughs> given the lore behind that gun i can definitely appreciate that I um also during the king's fall section the, yeah i wonder if we have yeah. to go through the whole quest line and collect I, all the bits and pieces to get the touch of malice that's exactly what I was wondering, especially not just with the touch of malice, but also with the um, the the necrochasm. Are we going to have to go through a big, long quest for this? I mean, I hope there's a quest tied to it. I hope it's not as long as the original touch of malice quest. And I if, certainly the same thing for the necrochasm. I hope I hope you don't have to wait for two extremely rare drops. But I don't know, man. We'll have to see. We, we didn't get any information on whether or not those um, those raid exotics are going to be locked behind a quest. But moving on here, next up we had the Wrath of the Machine Armor, the new ornament setups for that. And this stuff looks really cool. It's basically the same as the Wrath, the normal Wrath of the Machine hard mode set, just with a different color scheme. And like the SIVA on you is activated and it's breaking off and kind of going off to do its own little thing, which looks really cool in my opinion. Uh, you know, it is very, very similar. It's just had some, you know, uh, frills put, you know, it's the a lot added. brighter, a lot yeah. warmer. Yep, that's the right. And this digital shimmering effect thing does add a nice little touch for it as well. So, um, yeah, you know, that's... I don't know if I'm going to be grinding my heart out for that stuff, <laughs> in all honesty. <laughs> After seeing the King's Fall After and, like, the, the Crota Fall, stuff? Yeah, yeah. man, that stole the show for me. But, like, I know a lot of people yeah. are very partial to the Wrath of the Machine stuff, man. It does look, it does look pretty decent and stuff, but... It does. Yeah, man. But we have, and of course, yeah, we we yeah. hadn't stopped there. I thought that would be all the armor, but we do have this moment slash age of triumph armor as well. We do, and, um, and I forget how you can obtain this stuff. Is this from packages? The um, I do believe this is from the treasures of triumph that you'll yes. be able to get three of each week from uh, doing your daily, doing one daily story mission a week, doing uh, your weekly heroic, and doing one match in the weekly six v six playlist. Right. And this is a very classical, very year mm-hmm. one esque design with the addition of Chroma as well that we've had in previous years for our different spotlight slash highlight effects and stuff like that. There was also some really nice class items um, that were changing. The Warlock Bond in particular was changing and revolving and. Yeah. And shifting shape it that looked pretty cool and these class items are obtained through some kind of apparent quest line with the speaker very customizable set because i do believe they said any chroma can be applied to it right yeah. yep so i'm pretty sure got, i heard them say that which is kind of crazy which they've been adding to over the years uh, as time's mm-hmm. gone by because we had a very limited kind of color palette for the chroma stuff and now we've got a lot more yeah. so we've got you've got a whole 
you know, boatload of different colors that you can apply to this armor set to really customize things. And some of it looked pretty good. I mean, it was, it was, as it I does. say, like it's very classical year one stuff, which I, I wasn't too massively keen on in all honesty, but they've had, they've added some really nice touches with these kind of highlights and, um, yeah. you know, added shimmery effects and stuff like that. The hunter's helmet had a nice kind of eye piece on it that looked, was very similar to, um, the, uh, knucklehead radar, um, helm, yeah. you know, it's a very clear callback to armor, so to some of the OG armor in year one. Yeah. Um, with, with, with nice little highlights and symbols and like lit up neon lights on them. Yeah. Now, along with that, we also got to see two, uh, two older, well, actually three older exotics there. We got to see the Dragon's Breath with its new uh, Tiger Man sort of uh, exotic ornament. We got to see the Lord of Wolves with its new ornament. And we got to see the black and gold Suros regime with a griffin on it. I got to say that Suros regime looks pretty cool, man. Yeah, and they had another one, the, the prototype one that looked very similar to the very first year one skin for the Soros yeah. regime. That, I mean, that uh, the black and yellow kind of griffin thing, that looked superb. But I, when they put that old prototype style ornament on it, I was like, ooh, I kind, I kind of like that as well. But yeah. The pocket infinity still looks like it might be lost to the ravages of time. We yeah, still have man. not heard anything about that or the dubious volley, which yeah. while we never actually had in game has been in the, um, has been in the, uh, the, the database for quite some time. No mention yeah. of either of those two exotics. Yeah. Which is a shame, but maybe, maybe yeah. they could still surprise us. Perhaps they could, there could be something, you know, popping up just like the black spindle quest lines. There was when those were put into circulation, they really took us or by the, surprise. Um, Outbreak prime. Exactly. That was a complete surprise too. Yeah, man. So maybe, you know, we can still have a glimmer of hope there. After that, we got a little bit of talk about balance. This is where the actual sandbox changes come into effect. Yeah. And uh, first things first, they wanted to talk a bit about blade dancers and how they've, kind of rolled back most of those health region uh, nurse. We know about this from the, the the update they gave us a few weeks ago. Stuff like the Soros regime is getting its uh, old health region back, but the Red Death is not, which makes yeah. me kind of sad. That is a bit sad because we were hoping that Red Death might get some form of buff and, you know, yeah. it probably won't be if that's the case with the health regen. So uh, th those changes uh, there. So, um I mean, all of these weapon tweaks here will be going through in great detail on the Planet Destiny podcast on Sunday yes. at 10 p.m. on the Pacific side of things. Uh, I think here we're probably just going to relay them as they are, you know, as they're listed, you know, as we have them at the moment, rather than discuss all the big, heavy, juicy bits. Because we'll save that for Sunday, won't we? We'll go through all that. Yeah, we got to keep you watching. Yeah, we've got to keep you interested, keep you hooked. Uh, which reminds me, we are getting some patch notes as well that will be dropping at 10 a.m. Pacific time, I think they said, on March 28th. On the 28th, yes. So, Talk about in detail everything that's going to be happening in the Age of Triumph, which we yeah. will be covering extensively. Yeah. So to continue these um, sandbox changes that they slapped at the end of the stream, health regeneration changes are going to be rolled back somewhat, but not everything. Um, and we've had some nerfs. Haven't we, mate? Unfortunately, rip. Yeah, <laughs> we we called yeah, this um, one. We did. Call we did, it. and uh, there's going to be a slight nerf to range on hand cannons. They are going to be tweaked just a little bit, knocking down their max effective range by about three meters. Now that doesn't seem like a lot. You know, it's only three meters. I think the maximum range you can get on an optimally rolled palindrome with like rifle barrel and rangefinder, the one you can buy from the the vendor right now. I think the yeah. optimal range is like thirty, maybe thirty one meters. So it's going to knock that down to about twenty seven to twenty eight meters. That yeah. doesn't really affect the um, the twenty two eighty one impact and the the like ninety four impact hand cannons too much because they already have pretty high range. Yeah. What I'm worried about is if this is a blanket range nerf across hand cannons, what that's going to do to the already suffering faster rate of fire, lower impact hand cannons. It'll so the, bury the them. 32 rate like of fire, 68 impacts. Yeah, it's just going to yeah, bury it, them completely. The you know even the, more because they're already they're already worse performing than the 2281s. Yeah, they're so, already in a pretty bad spot. I just had a video about that go up on the BD channel a week or two ago yeah. about how those hand cannons are suffering right now because of yeah. their lower base range and overall lower effectiveness in Crucible and outside of Crucible. And this this is going to hit them even harder because yeah. 
ah, man, their, their range is already so low. So there's going to be even more emphasis now on having rangefinder and rifle barrel yeah. on your hand cannons, which begs to mention that if you haven't picked up the vendor palindrome available from the Crucible do Quartermaster, do it before next Tuesday, just in case we have a full vendor weapon reset, a refresh. So if you haven't yeah. picked up vendor palindrome, go on over to the Crucible Quartermaster and put that baby in your vault. Because uh, I want to grab a wormwood from New Monarchy t- or from Future War Cult too. Yes, yeah, we can do that. But um, auto rifles, they've had another buff. <laughs> another, they got a buff. Yeah, they got a buff. I mean, this I agree with. We did, we did. I think they needed just a little bit extra. I'm hoping they haven't gone overboard with it, but a little bit extra will be a welcome change to many. I think because now especially with Necrochasm coming back and there's a bit more of an incentive to pick up a favourite auto-rifle. Um, this this is a welcome change. Just hope that it's not going to put auto-rifles back at the top of the tree, you know? I don't think it will, because um, really the only buff that they're getting is they're getting a buffed max damage fall-off in range. So basically they'll be able to hit for max damage further out, which is a good change. I'm, I'm okay with that. That's probably gonna That's probably going to be a really big benefit Two auto rifles and the mid impact archetype stuff like the Monte Carlo, the hard yeah. light. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, hard light doesn't have any damage fall off at all, so it's yeah. going to really benefit stuff like the the Monte Carlo, a which is good gun. because that yeah. archetype needs a little bit of help. Yeah, man, hard light's a great gun, and it's never had its time in the spotlight ever. Really, it's, That's it's true. been kind of fleeting about on the edge here and there and everywhere. It would be nice if that was a viable gun to use um, in the old competitive scene. I think that would be great. Um, Truth yeah. got one rocket returned and had a sped up <laughs> reload. You know, yeah. So. This is a change. I was going to say this is a change yeah. they talked about uh, a week or two ago. Yeah, that they they hear they hear the outcry about Truth. Um, they still haven't brought it back to having its uh, innate tripod. It's going to be able to have two rockets in the tube, but uh, a faster reload, which. Yeah. Hmm. We have had no nerfs or buffs to the Mythoclast. So that's going to be remaining the same. They mentioned that at the very beginning yeah. of the stream. That's a little bit confusing because the Mythoclast right now is, uh, it's it's still kind of fires like, you know, a bucking Bronco. Yeah, the I think just, just a little bit of a stability buff would have gone mm-hmm. fantastic, really, just to make it a little bit more viable because it's not going to be making much of a comeback for PvP in its current state, really. I think auto yeah. rifles and hand cannons and pulses are still going to be ruling the roost. Uh, but, you know, I'll probably end up eating my hat, as I always do with things like that, and it's going to be <laughs> right back up there in number one for some hidden reason or whatever. Um, I hope it's good. Yes. I, something that I thought was very much ne- needed. I know I'm probably going to get persecuted for this, but no land beyond flinching like the rest of the other sniper rifles. I'm very glad to see that that has finally been implemented. How about yourself? How do you feel about that? Ooh. Well, if you're getting flogged for that opinion, then whip out a double order of it because I'm going to get flogged too because <laughs> it, it had to happen. Look, yeah, and, you know, they, they telegraphed this change weeks ago. They yeah. you knew that um, No Land Beyond was going to have normal sniper flinch added to it. And uh, it's it's finally going to happen with the Age of Triumph. But on the positive side, you're finally getting ornaments for it. We got to see the digital camo yeah. ornament for the No Land Beyond. And um, while it hasn't been confirmed... I'm pretty sure that on the teaser trailer earlier this week, when you see that Titan reloading a bolt action sniper rival, I'm pretty sure that's the second ornament for the no land. Yeah. So there is two very juicy looking ones, not the ebony wood slash silver trimmings one we were talking about last week, but you Mm -hmm. know, still it's, it's two extra camos for no land beyond very, very welcome as it's never seen, seen them before. So, uh, yeah. Good stuff. It is good. And then Scorries. What's going on with Scorries then, mate? Well, like they explained before, Scorries will now only activate upon getting a kill. And it'll only be active for one minute until uh, uh, until you get basically another kill. And Dee showed that off by getting a kill, watching Scorries activate for about a, you know, about a minute. And then... It deactivated. You can't scories camp anymore if you're not getting any kills, which is a very big, very welcome, very good change. I've just got one one passage to say on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I've got that out of my system now. <laughs> I agree. Yes. So uh, yeah, I, I agree was, wholeheartedly. I was a little bit happy about that. 
So yeah, it, yeah, it, you know, it's about time. It, it 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 brings in a bit more of a reward for actual play rather than just sitting there and doing nothing. <laughs> so um, yeah, that I'm going to be very interested to see how that. Uh, applies to trials for example a lot of these changes on paper we don't really get to see the ins and outs and how they actually work until we can actually play on them which is why you know getting very upset or very overly excited can be a bit of a um you know a, a misnomer kind of thing so um yeah i'm very interested to see how that change is going to affect trials and whether scories is actually still going to be a usable artifact you know, is it going to be completely useless or is it actually going to be a viable way of playing? Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how exactly this change sort of affects the atmosphere in trial. Since, you know, you, you won't be able to just stay away from the enemy team uh, huddled up into a corner in the back of your spawn waiting for your super your, your supers to charge a little bit faster, which is good. Getting more mobi mobility, more incentive yeah. to move in that gameplay mode is always, always a good thing. Yeah, but all right. Are we off to the final bit of news about this uh, this live stream? We are. We are indeed. Well, it's finally happening. You cried out and Bungie has answered. Sidearms are getting a nerf and uh, a pretty good nerf in my opinion. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm one who believes that sidearms are not broken. Uh, it, mm -hmm. <laughs> the reason you're getting killed by Wormwoods everywhere isn't because the Wormwoods broken. It's just because it's the only special that maintains ammo. Yeah. And while sidearms will be continuing to maintain ammo after death in the Crucible once Age of Triumph goes live, you're only going to get one magazine after death. From your sidearm. No longer yeah. will you be able to stack up special, have 12 in the magazine, and then like 108 in reserves yeah. when yeah. you die and respawn. Yeah. This is a pretty big change, and it's a good change in my opinion. It could well bring special variety back. I just hope that it brings yeah. it back to threes. Um, because any any special that keeps even just an entire clip is still going to have quite a fair advantage in three versus oh, three. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I, again, we're going to have to see how that plays out. It would be fantastic if it's just nowhere near enough and we are going to see shotguns and snipers that aren't, you know, replenishable like the icebreaker, for example, coming back. You know, we can have a bit more special variety so um yeah that that is definitely something that we're gonna have to look at when we ever got the the new way of the land in our hands absolutely and but, you know they mentioned the philosophy when it comes to these special weapons for anybody out there who's who's still upset about sidearms regaining uh at least one magazine's worth of ammo after death and that's the point of a sidearm every other special class the special ability for that class is that it's able to one shot in in some way shape or form it's able to have a time to kill of zero uh, in some way, shape, or form. For shotguns, it's up close when you land all your pellets. For fusion rifles, it's when you land all your bolts. For sniper rifles, it's if you get a headshot. You're able to get a one-shot kill. Sidearms, under no circumstance, can ever get a one-shot kill. Yeah. So, what's the special thing about them? The fact that they can respawn with ammo and soon in Age of Triumph, respawn with at least one magazine of ammo, which yeah. I think is a pretty fair change. But to um to kind of coincide with that sort of change we're also getting a change to the way special ammo crates work this is the very last thing they showed off from now on special ammo crates are going to work exactly like heavy ammo crates when you when you activate that special ammo crate it's going to instantly refresh your magazine of your, the magazine of your special weapon so you don't have to instantly reload just like when you pop that when you when you pop that heavy crate it all your rockets are immediately loaded the same thing is now going to happen for special which is also i think going to help with the special um variety in crucible since yeah. you won't have to spend the next five to six seconds slowly reloading your shotgun yeah. once you finally it, hit that it's green really going to help the shotgun situation because mm -hmm. most of the time you either got rifled barrel which uh, slows it's rifle barrel that slows down the reload doesn't it or is it reinforced yes yeah reinforced was the more desirable one rifle it slows down your reload so if you've got that as your range booster and your shotgun then that's going to be tremendously handy uh it it basically widens the more the widens the kind of shotguns and the perks that you have more usable you know um so the, yeah that was a good intelligent change that i definitely doth my cap to uh, for the special crates. I just hope that it does enough and we see the muchly needed special variety returning to 3v3 game modes and Trials of Osiris. Exactly. And, you know, variety is what we wanted to see here. And um, I think it's a change that ultimately 
uh, ultimately, it's going to be a good thing. You yeah. know, uh, there, there's no real reason for those crates to not instantly give you back your ammo anyway. Yeah. Well, TB, I think that's I think we've pretty much hammered the entire. Is, isn't it a bit sad though? that's the last reveal stream? It is for Destiny. It's the One. last. Yeah, the, it's the last preview live stream that we're going to have um at least for uh for 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 a live event in destiny one yeah and uh it's really it's a little happening. bit bittersweet man yeah it's like yeah. it's really happening isn't it like destiny one is coming to a close i mean of course this opens up plenty for pastures new and greener grass and things to look forward to for the future but also a little bit on the sad side that destiny one the, the, this is like for me it's the first step that it's coming mm-hmm. to a close no more streams yeah. from bungie on destiny one but uh we're I mean, gonna it, sorry carry on me i was gonna say i mean we're probably going to have a stream or two you know leading up into destiny two but yeah this is the very last live event for destiny mm-hmm. one and it's the last bit of content that we're going to be getting in this game yeah. so you're, you're right it absolutely signals the end of this game and uh hopefully a bigger brighter better future yeah. with destiny two but, but we're going to be mulling over all of this information that was um, released in this reveal stream this evening on Sunday for the PD podcast, aren't we? We're going to have plenty to talk about. Oh, yeah. Especially with Rise of Iron coming out next week. Mm, we got a lot of stuff to discuss. Uh, Age of Triumph, I think you mean that. Age of Triumph. Or Age of Triumph, of- <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we've had too I'm many hoping- DLCs and stuff like, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, it, getting them all mixed up. Yeah, essentially, it's like uh, they're, they're all the same and they're all coming back again. So it's, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. the same stuff. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Make sure to tune in on Sunday, 10 p.m. Pacific time for the PD podcast. There's going to be much conflabbing and chin wagging and deliberations and um, all of that kind of waffle. A- excellent top quality waffle, isn't it, really? It is. It's going to be delicious. It is going to be a the <laughs> most delicious waffle you could probably ever sink your teeth into. Lovely. Well, let's see everybody off uh, for that and um, welcome them for Sunday's podcast. Right on. So that is pretty much going to be it for our wrap up of the final Age of Triumph live stream from Bungie. The Age of Triumph itself is going to be launching a uh, uh, six days from now, Tuesday, March 28th. It's going to be hopefully going live at about uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And we are going to have a lot of stuff to cover from there. You can, of course, tune in on Sunday, this Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. We will be going into full detail on everything we know about the Age of Triumph before this last live event goes into effect. And I got to say, I'm ready for it to happen, man. I'm ready to dive on into some raids. Absolutely. But all right, that is going to be it for this one, guys. Story, thanks so much for these streams, man. And thanks so much for these wrap ups. It's been a, a really good experience, man. Or if I get to spend any time with you, mate, I will always appreciate it and love it. (laughs) 